The PGA Tour will conclude its 2021-22 season this Sunday, crowning a FedEx Cup champion and distributing a record $75 million in bonuses, of which $18 million goes to the winner. However, for the tour commissioner, Jay Monahan, the celebration won't last long. Live Golf, the PGA's biggest rival series, plans on announcing yet another round of new transfers from the PGA ahead of its September event held in Boston. Here's what we know. Starting off with a major loss, Australia's latest major winner, Cameron Smith, is going to join the Live Golf Series at the end of the PGA playoffs, according to fellow Aussie golfer Cameron Percy. According to him, Smith and another Australian, Mark Leishman, had already signed deals to exit the PGA Tour. News of Smith's defection from the PGA Tour to the Saudi-backed breakaway competition sent shockwaves throughout the sporting world. World 2 would be the highest-profile name to join Live Golf. When news of his imminent defection was reported, Smith refused to comment as to whether he had inked a reported $145 million Australian dollar deal with Live Golf. Smith had previously been asked about his intentions immediately after winning his first major at St. Andrews last month, and the Aussie refused to answer, taking issue with the question even being asked. He responded by saying that he didn't feel good about reporters asking him about something unrelated to the British Open victory that he'd just scored not even an hour ago. While Smith had remained non-committal in his previous comments, he did say he was looking forward to being a part of the world team for the PGA Tour run President's Cup in Boston next month. Percy had also revealed that the deals for both Smith and 38-year-old Leishman, currently ranked 56 in the world, were quite lucrative. Smith, in general, was reportedly offered over $100 million. So what's next for Australian golf? Australia set to stage one of its biggest ever seasons of golf, headlined by an $8 million 16-event tour starting in October. Kirkman confirmed to report that live players are allowed to feature on the tour, unlike in Europe and the US, where the PGA and DP World Tours have banned dual members. In theory, this would open the door for Live Golf's Australian contingent to play several events at home in the coming months, split between the two tours. That ensures that any defection to Live Golf, as widely reported, would likely see Smith play more in Australia, not less. The PGA of Australia on Thursday confirmed the summer schedule, which has increased from 12 events in 2019-20, and will see the return of the Australian Open. Bolstering the announcement is the likelihood of big Australian names committing to play on home soil after the pandemic crushed opportunities over the past two summers. World Number two, Cameron Smith's set to return to play in the Australian Open and Australian PGA Championship, while compatriot Mark Leishman is also expected to feature. Top 50 player Lucas Herbert has already committed to play both showpiece Australian events, while number 66, Min Woo Lee, will feature at the Australian PGA Championship. Live Golf, meanwhile, is reportedly eyeing three Australian events as part of its expanded 2023 core schedule and the international series it runs with the Asian Tour. Should those events materialize around April, as reported by Australian Golf Digest, it would see the likes of Dustin Johnson, Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka, and Phil Mickelson also down under this upcoming season. However, this means that there will be even more events to come. While the Greg Norman-led series has its detractors due to its Saudi Arabian funding, Liv's reported venture into Australia will ultimately give golf fans more events and more international stars playing for big money purses on these shores. Combined with the bumper PGA Tour of Australasia's schedule, golf's Australian presence is set for a significant shot in the arm, while the groundwork has been put in place for more growth in the coming years. PGA of Australia is committed to increasing the prize money on its tour, this year offering $2 million at the Australian PGA Championship and $1.7 million each for the men's and women's fields at the Australian Open. Combined with the State Opens, State PGAs, the Players Series, and a New Zealand swing, the full season is worth more than $8 million. Even in the US, though it's not yet known whether LIV players will be allowed to compete in the majors, the Open seems will to remain, well, open to those players who qualify. Major winners Phil Mickelson, Patrick Reed, Bryson DeChambeau, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, and Louis Oisthuizen played in the 150th Open Championship despite committing to live, with Johnson finishing seven shots back in a tie for sixth. So who else is going to be joining the rival series? An all-Australian team in live golf is reportedly a done deal, as the Rebel League prepares to announce seven new players immediately after the FedEx Cup playoffs wrap up, with Cameron Smith set to to be one of them. Reports suggest that the latest set of stars to jump ship, including Smith, will be officially announced on August 29th, and the seven newbies will compete at Live Boston, the fourth of the eight $36 million tournaments. One of those could be the winner of the 2021 Masters, Hideki Matsuyama. According to respected golf journalist Dan Rappaport, Matsuyama would be the huge domino to fall, but it's not just his golfing ability that makes him such an enticing prospect for Live Golf. Hideki would bring a whole, massive, golf-crazed nation 
end under the live fold, Rappaport said. They'd get a TV deal, sponsorships, team owner in Japan no problem, which is why they're offering him the bag. Another member of the seven who is expected to join is Aussie Mark Leishman. Leishman's impending arrival aligns with Rappaport's claims that an all-Australian live golf team is essentially a done deal, as he would link up with Smith and Matt Jones. One Aussie who had been heavily linked with a move to the breakaway series was Adam Scott, who had previously been in discussions with the Saudi-backed league about joining. However, it appears almost certain that he will not be departing the PGA Tour. Meanwhile, in other golf-related news, first up, Max Homa joins the crowd frustrated with tour formatting. The New England Patriots don't start the Super Bowl with a 14-point lead. Alabama doesn't have a 10-point advantage at kickoff in the college football national championship game. The Golden State Warriors didn't start the NBA Finals with a 15-point cushion. PGA Tour player Max Homa wonders whether the FedEx Cup playoffs points leader should have a two-shot lead over everyone else before the first tee shot is hit in the season-ending Tour Championship. Homa's comments come after he posted the second lowest round ever at the Tour Championship on Friday, a bogey-free 62 that still left him 10 shots behind leader Scotty Scheffler. Scheffler, as the FedEx Cup points leader, started the Tour Championship at 10 under, at least two shots better than everyone else. Without starting strokes, Scheffler would be at 9 under 11 after 36 holes, but instead he's 19 under after 36. Even though he didn't perform as good as Homa, he ended up scoring better because of the point advantage, which would be understandably frustrating for fellow players. Next up, Nara An leads the Canadian Pacific Women's Open. Nara An shot a 6 under 65 this Friday to top the leaderboard in the suspended second round of the Canadian Pacific Women's Open. An had her second straight bogey-free round at Ottawa Hunt and Golf Club after opening with a 64 on Thursday. An LPGA Tour rookie after winning twice in South Korea, the 26-year-old An had a 13 under 129 total. Minutes before darkness forced the suspension of play and the round delayed for two hours in the morning because of heavy rain and lightning, Nelly Korda closed with a birdie on the par 5 ninth for a 63 and a tie for second. Three-time tournament champion Lydia Ko also was 5 under after a 68, playing alongside Henderson and Jennifer Kupcho, who was 7 under after 68 holes. And lastly, Masters champion Scotty Scheffler is playing every bit like the number one player in golf and was on the verge of turning the Tour Championship into a rout. Three holes by Xander Shoffley changed everything going into the weekend at Eastlake. Shoffley holed a pair of birdie putts and then drilled a four iron just over the bunker and right by the hole over the par 5 18th, rolling in a five foot eagle putt. The birdie birdie eagle finish, Scheffler had to settle for pars, gave Shoffley a 7 under 63 as he went from a six shot deficit to two shots behind Friday. Shoffley rarely gets overly excited, and this was no exception. Starting the day with a five shot lead, Scheffler made a birdie from five feet on the par three second hole and then pounded driver on the next hole so perfectly that he had a flip wedge into five feet for another birdie. At that point, he was ahead by eight shots. That's a wrap for this video. What do you guys think about the ongoing rivalry between the PGA Tour and Live Golf? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.